Yeah, they're gonna have the new Yeah. We got permission yesterday on this place once that we drove over here. We found a ton of geese on there. I mean, it had to have been, I don't know, probably three or four hundred geese in this field yesterday morning. Called the guy up, got permission from him. So, had a good hunt yesterday on a different place, and now we're hunting this place this morning. We can hear tons of geese on the river. The river is only, I don't know, 800 yards behind us. Now we just wait to see when they're going to start flying. Looks good. Overcast. Should be a good day. I'm excited. You guys ready? All right. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a goose that landed in the decoys, but there's a bunch of decoys blocking him, so I'm gonna run out there and flush him and shoot him. There's no birds flying right I mean, they're around, but they're way off. So now's the time. Good shot, Marcus. Him. Man, oh, it's like I was shooting, guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if he gets in a ditch, he has a chance. Michael's, Michael's sneaking up on this piece. Let's see how close he gets. About. 200 yards out. What odds do we give him? To kill one? Yeah, just to get one. Uh, 20%. Spot and stock goose hunting. Always revert to spot and stock. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, look at that. Jesus. <laughs> I should have stayed patient yeah. and gone closer. 
one thing, just hunting in general, but definitely we're on someone else's property. Trying to pick up all of the empty shells, wads, especially in a field like this, it's pretty easy to go find the wads. And there's definitely some from previous hunters as well. So just trying to clean up a little bit because that's how you lose access is if you litter a whole bunch. So we don't want to do that. We had a few that really wanted to commit. Obviously we didn't shoot the best. <laughs> no. <laughs> Could have shot better, especially the one happens. that was like on the ground. Especially the ones that <laughs> cupped in, missed three times, my boy, me, oh, yeah. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> but it's still fun. I mean, it's, to me, it's a learning experience, like trying to figure out what we did wrong. Yeah, this is the part where everyone who knows a lot more than us in the comments, they put everything that we did wrong. Like, you guys suck at calling. Oh, the decoy true. spread was just off. That blind set up, they could see you. Just put them in the comments. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what that's been there for, right? Just watching the geese and having seeing a thousand overhead. geese overhead. And yeah, that's a lot of fun. It was pretty sweet watching Michael try to stock those ones. <laughs> <laughs> Got yeah. close. <laughs> we got still five geese from yesterday, two geese from today. And we're gonna go cook them up in a bunch of different ways. So everybody's gonna run through a few recipes of what to do and a few ideas. My plan is to make three different dishes out of the geese that I have. The first dish that I'm gonna do is what I think is, I mean, if you have the time, the best option. The only problem is it requires plucking the whole bird, which is very time consuming. And I feel like a goose is significantly harder than uh, a lot of birds. It's harder than a duck, it's harder than a turkey for whatever reason around the wings, the back. It's just a pain to pluck. But if you have the time to do it, I think the results are definitely worthwhile. From there, I'm going to cut off the wings and legs, leave the skin on the rest of the body on the whole chest cavity. Save the wings and legs for a separate dish. I'm also going to remove a bunch of the internal fat. When I gutted this goose, there's a ton of fat in the chest cavity, crazy amounts of fat. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to cube that up and render that fat out for the dish that I'm going to cook with the legs. To render the fat, uh, pretty simple. I basically just cubed it up, put it in some water, just about covered in water, and then just let that cook off till all the water's gone and you're left with nothing but liquid fat. We're going to use that to cook the legs in. With the rest of the carcass, I'm going to put it in a brine for almost two days. Uh, it's just a simple brine, mostly salt, a little brown sugar, and throw some pepper in there. Mostly the salt is what's really doing the work. Um, and just look up recipes online for, for a brine. Gonna let that sit for a couple days. And then I'm just gonna pack a whole bunch of seasonings on the outside, mostly pepper Italian seasoning. It's simple, it's easy, it's easy, it works. Let that sit for a little while and uh, fire the smoker up. Once the smoker's warmed up, I'm gonna throw that on there and do kind of a long smoke. So once that bird's a little over halfway done, I'm gonna add in some potatoes, Brussels sprouts, and cherry tomatoes, and just to round off a dinner, cook it to whatever your desired internal temp is, and uh, pull it out, let it rest. Got a pretty dang tasty dinner. This goose was exceptionally fat, just insanely tasty. This is the preferred method to me, if you have the time to pluck it, do something like this, it really, you get a ton of meat off of it. You can pull all the meat off the carcass. It's insanely good. This is all the fat I rendered and I'm gonna use it to braise the legs. And I didn't realize it until after the fact, but this is probably way overkill. This is too much fat to braise it in. But here we are, the oil is popping uh, through the legs in there and basically deep fried them in, in its own fat. Uh, they're super good though. Just kind of got a sear on either side. So then I added a beer and some water, some better than bullion stuff, onion garlic mix that all in and let that braise for six seven hours uh, i feel like it's hard to mess up at that point once you just kind of let it sit in the dutch oven for a while and then uh that's braised out the bones come out you strip all the meat off um i'm gonna mix in some leftover veggies i have a little barbacoa warm up some tortillas put that meat on there a little avocado some tomato cilantro maybe some sour cream if you're inclined and you got yourself a very, very tasty little taco. For the last dish, it's a super popular thing to do with geese, especially if you get a bunch of them, is to make pastrami. It's really easy. It's, all you have to do is skin the bird, breast out the bird. You know, you can save your leg and wing meat for the, the braise like in the previous dish. But with a pastrami, you just get a dry brine. Usually you use this online cure calculator. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, it just kind of gives you a, a reference and you can mess with the numbers a little bit to use the desired pink salt, salt and sugar. Uh, dry brine, let that sit for about three days. Pull them out, 
uh, rinse off the brine and then let them, let them chill for a little while, a couple hours. Some people go up to a day, I did a couple hours. And then I'm gonna dip them in red wine just to kind of give it something adhesive to stick a bunch of seasonings to. And then just a bunch of pepper, mostly pepper. You can throw whatever seasonings you want, but I like to do a big coat of black pepper on the outside. Throw them in the smoker, cook them to the desired internal temp, and you got yourself a bunch of really, really good pastrami. I'm making jalapeno goose poppers. Yeah, it's pretty basic, I know, but hey, maybe I'm just a basic guy. What you're gonna need is jalapenos, cream cheese. Shoot yourself a goose and we're ready to go. So the first thing I did was I got the birch barrel fired up. Threw some wood in there, a little bit of lighter fluid. Got that thing going. Then I uh, cut up my jalapenos long ways, hot dog style. Sliced up the goose and se gave it a quick sear on a pan with some butter. Put some cream cheese in those sons of guns. I took that seared meat and cooled it down for a little bit and then I put it on top of the cream cheese, wrapped those sons of bees in bacon. The birch barrel was at 350 degrees, put them on the birch barrel for about 15 minutes, did a little, little flippy flip and whoo they were good. <laughs> I like to do orange chicken, but do it with geese. Really simple recipe. But it's good, it's something different, you know? You can use wild game instead of using chicken like you would at, uh, you know, Panda Express or something like that. Anytime that I'm really cooking geese is, I like to brine it. Um, I'll take two breast, I'll put it in some water with some sea salt, that way that it kind of pulls out any of that blood that's left over or anything like that. Put some ice cubes in it to keep it nice and cold. We have been brining this now for a little bit, about four and a half hours. So now we're gonna take it out and cut them up into little chunks, kind of like nuggets. We're gonna add our flour into one bowl and then some egg, oil, salt and pepper, you know, some spices and stuff in another bowl. And dip it in the egg, dip it in the flour, get it coated. Start heating up that oil and get it ready to go. Got some rice on the stove as well. So once you get the goose battered and everything like that, you want to put it into the oil, but you want to cook it for about three minutes. That's it. I mean, goose is red meat. You kind of want it in that like medium uh, range. So cook it for about three minutes. It'll get it nice and crispy. And then you're going to want to put that orange sauce on it. I'm going to be easy. Panda Express orange sauce. Just use that. You know, it's kind of one of those like, why I mess up a good thing. This is a really good recipe. It's not that hard. It only took me, I don't know, about 30 minutes or so to like completely cook it and everything. Um, this is one of the ways that I could convince my wife to eat goose. She's not a big fan of it, but you know, we tried some different ways and eventually found something that she really liked. And this is one of my favorite ways too. Well, I hope you enjoyed the goose hunting series. Um, it was really fun for me. I had never got a chance to shoot goose over decoys like that. And then this was kind of an example of something that doesn't take an incredible investment. We did have a pretty solid spread, which was, we got kind of lucky. We got to borrow some decoys. So we got lucky in that fashion, but it was fairly modest setup. We got permission from people. We didn't pay any access fees. I didn't realize how doable it was. In my mind, a lot of people are paying, you know, big lease fees or they have some special access and they have tens of thousands of dollars worth of decoys. And we did it with a fairly modest setup and uh, we made some delicious meals out of them. Stay tuned for all the content we have coming up. We're gonna have ice fishing series and trapping series, all sorts of good stuff down the pipe. So thanks for watching.